Hello, this is Steve Long. We're going to be talking about thin stone veneer installation with moisture control, and we'll be following the 2012, 15, and 18 building codes. And our primary installation will be over stud construction, over jip, and or wood-based sheathing. The thin stone veneer installation will be over metal lath and mortar, often called the exterior plaster. Our stone will then be applied to that exterior plaster system. And the goal, of course, is to avoid costly tear-offs due to moisture sitting in the wall system, not being able to dry, not being able to drain out. So let's start out at the beginning with one of the most important parts of our system, which is the water-resistant barriers, the house wrap or building paper, and the flashings. Not all house wraps and building papers and fluid applied materials are made the same. Any of these products must be equivalent to a grade D water resistant barrier to be used under thin stone veneer and plaster. Grade D requirements are five perms vapor permeability or more and a 10 minute minimum water resistance. Then a second layer minimum must be applied over top of that first grade D paper and it must be a grade D paper as well. So two layers can be pretty confusing when we're trying to integrate the uh, flashing details with the second layer of paper, particularly at the sill of the window and at the head of the window. So let me show you an alternative that is going to be easier to install and allow for better moisture control, drainage, and ventilation and drying capability. As discussed previously, not all WRBs are made the same. If we have a grade D 60 minute rated building material, house wrap or equivalent. And we separate the water resistant barrier from the stucco with a design drainage base such as Keen Building Products rain screen. We then only need one layer of a 60 minute water resistant house wrap or building paper. Keen rain screen is an entangled net material with a fabric over top to stop the mortar from filling the cavity. The open cavity created will then allow for enhanced drainage and ventilation, allowing our wall system to dry properly. It should be noted there are fluid applied systems that are equivalent to 60 minute water resistant barriers. Check with those manufacturers to ensure that they are an equivalent material. So now let's get back to a critical penetration, the window and the window flashing. So let's start with the pan flashing, and that is a flashing that goes over the pan of the window, which will actually be inside the framing under the window. So if the window does leak, the water will not damage the wood and it will come out over the front face of the WRB. So you see it on the inside of the pan here. Now from the outside, we see that flashing come out to the front of the wall over this bib. So water gets out of the window and sheds down over top of the water resistant barrier. Now note here how the jams are flashed and the head of the window is flashed. Everything sheds over top of each other down and sheds over top of the sill flashing. Okay, let's catch another critical piece, a drip cap. The back leg goes under the self-adhered flashing and then comes out over the window to direct water away from the wall and over top of the window. We then cover it with the WRB and everything sheds down. The next most critical detail is at the bottom of the wall using a weep screed. A weep screed should have a three and a half inch leg and a slope flange to allow moisture to be able to get out from the wall. The weep screed should be installed not less than an inch below the sill plate, transitioning down onto the foundation. Flash the leg with a self adhere flashing and then bring your paper and your rain screen down over top of the flashing to allow moisture and water to come out of the wall over top of the slope flange. The requirement is it's to be placed four inches above grade, two inches over paved surfaces, or one half inch over walking surfaces supported by the same foundation as the exterior wall is. When installing over stud wall construction, do not let anyone talk you out of using this weep screed flashing detail. Aesthetically, placing stone on the foundation below the weep screed will help make the wall look better. Just be aware that manufacturers of stone may not warrant their stone going directly below grade. Another important detail often installed by the roofer is a kickout, which is integrated with a step flashing at the roof and wall intersection to divert water away from the wall and into the gutter. This is required by code also. 
One last detail right here at the water table, short wall coming between siding and our stone. Be sure to separate it with a Z flashing, which will direct water from the backup wall out over the water table. Before we install a lath, let's check out our windows. This is a J flange window. See the opening here on the uh, edges of the window? This is fine for vinyl siding, which with this will accept, but this will not work with a thin stone veneer. If that is the case, there are inserts to go into that J channel, and they go into the channel, and now you have something to butt up against when we bring our lath up to the window. We can put our spacing bead there and install our lath. So here is Amico Easy Bead. It is a casing bead that's ready to accept the lath, and it's got an expansion material right on the end of the casing bead, ready to be caulked. It's going to space the uh, casing bead away from the window, give us a uh, 3 eighths of an inch by quarter inch deep sealant joint, and it's ready to be caulked. All right, so let's watch the installation of the Easy Bead. We're coming down the jam of the window. We're going to make a cut on the outside flange. We're going to make a cut on the inside expansion flange. You'll see the V cut here. Bend the easy bead down under the sill of the window. And then we're going to do the same thing on the opposite jam. Coming up the jam, attach in. And you can now see how we integrate with the drip cap. Drip cap comes over the easy bead, over the window, directing water out from the behind the wall, over top of the window. Easy bead should not be installed above the window because we do not want to seal it in place because it will block the water from escaping the wall. And this expansion is required between all the similar materials. Now we install our lath, it's going to come up into the ground of the easy bead, nail it in place, and now we have an integrated system. You can see it in this finished wall system, a drip cap integrating with our easy bead in the window. Here you got to cut out our WRB, our keen rain screen, and then our lath. Hey, there you go. Now we have our 2.5 self furred lath, never use flat lath on a vertical wall, over our Keen Rain Screen Moisture Control System with Easy Bead installed, our drip caps, all our flashing details, and we're ready to go with Moisture Control System in place. So for protection, we're just going to put window film under over top of our windows, and now we're ready to install a scratch coat. Scratch coat's installed, minimum of a half of an inch. And once we get this part joined, then we'll be ready to scratch it. So the scratch is applied with a rake-like uh, tool, and that's to give a bond from the scratch coat to the mortar that's going to be on the back of the stone. Although this is a different project, it gives you a good idea of our scratch coat in place and then applying stone up over the scratch coat with a moisture control system behind it. Once stone's installed, we tear off our plastic film protection and then we caulk our joints and we're ready to go. Due to energy efficiency, walls do not dry like they once did, so they need help. We really need to ventilate and dry the wall systems today.